Hi, I'm Neil. Welcome to California Builds. Today I'm making a rack. This one can hold audio gear that I use to record things like guitars and my voice. It also has a shelf that I could use to store things like microphone cables. To get started, I got a sheet of 3 quarter inch maple plywood and had the lumber yard rip it down into small pieces that I could fit into my car. I trimmed all of the pieces down to about 11 inches wide to make sure everything was uniform before moving on. I cut the shelves out at about 19 inches wide and the sides at about 22 inches. I laid some blue tape down to help reduce the tear out I'd get from cutting the plywood, but I'm not convinced it helped a ton since I still had a good amount to clean up after cutting. I took a piece of plywood I trimmed earlier and used it to begin marking out the angle I wanted the front to have. I made sure to leave a good amount of space for the shelf underneath and measured to make sure that the bottommost rack space would have about 8 inches or so of clearance if I ever fill that space with something in the future. I marked the line where it would sit and then measured about a half inch away from that point to give it a nice recess into the piece. To cut this angle on the plywood, I grabbed a level and clamped it down an inch and a half from my cut line to use as a guide for my circular saw. I cut the piece and traced the same line on the next side. After cutting that side, I noticed that there was a slight amount of variation between the pieces, which caused the angles to begin at two different points. To fix it, I clamped both pieces together and ripped a small bit off of each piece, and that seemed to straighten everything back up. Now that I had all of the pieces cut, it was time to sand each of the edges down and clean up any tear out that I saw. Next, I measured out walnut edge banding that I would be attaching to each of the shelves. I have to say, this part was pretty fun to try out. All I had to do was put a little wax paper down over the edge banding, and then just run my iron over it. I would double check that everything was stuck, and then used a roller to make sure there weren't any wrinkles or air pockets left behind. The next morning, I started trimming the excess edge banding with a utility knife blade so it was nice and flush with the plywood. There's something really satisfying about seeing the long curly bits being trimmed off. After trimming the face and back edge banding, I needed to apply some on the top. I just used the same process as before and got the last bits on there. Once that was all done, I figured this would be a good opportunity to sand each of the pieces before I began assembling everything. Since there were quite a few surfaces, sanding everything down while it was flat really helped. To assemble the pieces, I decided to try out using dowels for the first time. I got a handy little jig to help with drilling the dowels, though I think next time instead of holding it down with my hand, I'll just want to clamp it down. That way I'll have a better grip and less shaking. I was really nervous that some of the shaking would cause the dowels to not be lined up, but everything seemed to work out. Once I got the holes drilled for the bottom, I applied some glue and clamped it together and started fitting the dowels. They fit really snug, so I trimmed off all but a small amount that I was able to hit with a rubber mallet to make sure the dowels were completely secure. After that, I just repeated the same steps to get the outside pieces assembled. To put in the shelf, I first fitted in place and measured and squared it up. Then it was just a matter of drilling the holes and taking it out to add the glue. Then I put it back in place. I made sure to wipe any excess glue before it dried and then added my dowels. Once I was confident that the dowels were all secure, I trimmed them all flush with the sides of the piece. In the future, I think I'll use some smaller lengths of dowels from the start and just trim them flush immediately to save time. I noticed that some of the holes were a little chipped, so I added some wood filler in those areas to make them smooth again. This stuff really stinks, so make sure you've got some airflow when you're working with it. Now that the piece was completely assembled, it was time to do some last sanding passes and make sure it was ready for finishing. I used a tack cloth over the whole thing to get rid of any extra dust after sanding. I'd say it cleaned up pretty well. For the finish, I'm applying two coats of Danish oil. The best part about applying it had to be seeing the walnut areas stand out. I waited a couple days between the coats for it to cure since it was a little cold and rainy, and I'd say it turned out pretty nice. 
Once it was dry, I turned the piece on its back and made some marks for the feet. I decided to go with some small, clear rubber feet for this one just to keep the bottom off the floor. To install these, all I had to do was make a small pilot hole and then attach the feet with the provided screws. The feet are just the right size to let this sit on the carpet without raising the whole thing up higher than I originally wanted. The last step was to install the rack hardware. I placed it on one side and used a combination square to make sure it was aligned correctly. Then I just marked the holes where I wanted it to be attached. I drilled some pilot holes and then screwed it in place. I repeated the same process on both sides and they lined up perfectly the first time. And that's the finished product. All that was left to do was add in my music gear and make sure everything fit. Overall, I'm really happy with the way this project turned out. I have to admit, it was definitely a challenge to build since I was using a lot of techniques I hadn't used before. If I were to make another one of these racks in the future, I'd think about making a few adjustments that would make it even easier. So that's it for this project. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more, make sure to subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time on California Builds.